hard when like you have a friend behind the camera because you're just like I want I'm like chatting with you. Today I'm making classic chicken noodle soup. This is a whole chicken noodle soup, meaning we're gonna throw this entire bird into the pot and we are going to remove different parts of the bird as they finish cooking so that none of the meat is dry and overcooked by the end of it. So that's what makes this recipe special. And the key to a really delicious full flavored chicken noodle soup is obviously the broth. So we're gonna spend a lot of time and care working on the broth. To begin, always seasoning the chicken before it goes in. I'm gonna season this pretty heavily, as you can imagine, and just give it a couple of minutes to let the salt sort of penetrate and soak into the chicken so that the meat itself is actually seasoned and not just the broth. We'll set that aside. Momentito. Oops, I just got um, soap on your camera. So while the chicken sits for a few minutes and you could do that up to 24 hours in advance so actually be an awesome move on your part I just didn't do that I'm going to cut up the aromatics that go into this broth so it's two whole onions and you will notice that I'm leaving the skins on you don't have to if you're skeeved out by it however the golden hue of the skins is actually going to impart a golden color to the broth and that's gonna signify like delicious chickeny flavor. So I recommend you leave them on. Two carrots, you can peel them if they're nasty, but these are nice. I'm just gonna chop off the ends and just a super rough chop on these to expose some more of their surface area so that it flavors the soup. Two celery sticks, also roughly chopped, going in. And then I have one tablespoon of whole black peppercorns. They will ultimately get strained out of the broth, so it doesn't matter that they're whole and not cracked. And then two heads of garlic, which I'm splitting crosswise in half to keep them relatively intact, but to expose their flavor. And those go in, skins and all. Again, it's getting strained out. No big deal. All right, and then a couple of sprigs of fresh dill. We're going to add dill at the end um, for like a little fresh, vibrant moment, but you can also add it to the broth to impart some of its flavor. So the chicken's going into the pot, nestled on top of everything, and I'm gonna add 14 cups of water. So you want basically just enough water to barely cover the chicken so that it's all submerged, um, but not so much that the broth is weak and unflavorful. Okay, so we're going over to the stove and I'm gonna bring this to a boil, which will take probably 10 or 15 minutes. And then we're just, we, we keep on waiting until the chicken breast registers 155, at which point we will take the chicken out and rest it until it's cool enough to handle. And then we'll put the chicken back in and then we'll take it out again, it's a whole thing. That's all for now. So. The internal temperature of the chicken is 155 of the breast at the thickest part. So I'm going to turn this off momentarily and bring it back over. And now we are going to lift this chicken up. Okay. So one way to do it is to kind of stick your tongs like right into the cavity and then and then tilt it to let some of that broth drip back into the pot. And you can always use another like heavy spoon to kind of help lift. Just let it drain for a sec and then onto your cutting board. And we will let this rest here until it's cool enough to handle. Um, like five or 10. So we are going to break this chicken down now, which is a lot easier than it seems if you know where all of the kind of like joint parts are in the chicken that make it easy to kind of separate it all apart. So let's just go over the anatomy here. We are breast side up, so here are the, the two breasts, here are the two wings, and then here are the two legs, which is thigh plus drumstick. So. Breast meat is white meat, which means that it has a tendency to dry out, which is why we're going to remove it from the carcass now and leave it off to the side. We'll shred it and we'll add it back into 
the soup later on because we don't want it to cook any further than it already has. On the other hand, the legs and the wings are dark meat. They can handle a little bit more time. Actually, they'll benefit from it. They'll get really nice and breezy and tender and the stock will continue to build flavor while they're in it. So, we're gonna pull this wing out from the breast and then take a knife and just make a cut right in between the joint. Oops and it comes apart. So making incisions right where the breast and the legs meet, come down the side here, and then you can use your hand to kind of pop this out of the socket, which is kind of gross, but it's fine. You pop that joint out, and it will actually just come off by tearing it. Now we take off the breast meat. There's a breast bone that runs right down the middle of the chicken and you're gonna use your knife to sort of carve away the flesh from both sides of that bone to so leaving the bone behind. So first one just a little to the left of that breastplate I'm making a cut down and then I'm following the contour of the carcass so angling my knife a bit to carve the meat off. So there's one breast and then I like to actually flip it around because I find it easier to sort of carve off this way because I'm right-handed. So now on the other side of the breast, making a cut down and then carving it off and away from the carcass. Okay, so two legs, two breasts, two wings, and the rest of the carcass. So the carcass is going back in. There's tons of flavor in the bones, lots of gelatin. There's meat still left on there that has a lot to give still. We're gonna put the wings also back into the pot. We're going to take the skin right off of these legs because as it cooks, it'll render and there'll be a lot of fat in it otherwise. Um, and if you want a clear broth, you need to take it off. And the legs go back in. And we go back over the stove and bring this back up to a simmer. Okay, this is gonna simmer for 40 minutes until the leg meat is impossibly tender. So just give it time. So, what's left here are our two chicken breasts. Um, I'm gonna discard the skin. And then you can use forks to shred, or I actually just prefer to do it with my hands and just shred the meat into little bite-sized pieces. Okay, set that aside and we're gonna chop the vegetables, but first let's clean off our cutting board. Oh, what do you know? There's new dish soap here. Method. Gabby, yeah. what's with the new dish soap? We're trying it out, I hope you like it. I like it. It's how we it's just the first time. I think we're gonna love it. Does everyone get it? We will. Just use oh. soap bar. Smells, Smells good. good. Right? It smells like basil. It actually smells like basil. Like nice. real basil as opposed to like fake basil. I like basil. the photo. Yeah, it's pretty. It's fancy. Je prouve. So now on to the remaining veg. We have carrots and celery in the broth, but we also are gonna bring them back into the picture later on for like fresh vegetables that are just tender and cooked through. I am gonna peel the carrots for this one because they'll look nicer, they're kind of like presentation carrots, if you will. I don't know if you know anything about those. And we'll just cut these into thin coins. Very retro. And then likewise for the celery, lobbing off the kind of gross end. So, breast is shredded, veg is sliced. Now we're just waiting for the chicken legs to finish braising, which will be another 15 minutes or so. And then we'll pull that apart and strain the stock, and then lastly, and this is the best part, we'll dump in the didellini um, and cook the pasta right in the broth, which is nice because it's all happening in one pot. You don't have to bring pasta water to a boil. We'll talk about that later. Let's go check on the soup. Um, I am going to grab these songs and take a look, but at this point, you can see that the broth is a very beautiful color. Okay, so golden hue, thanks in part to the skins of the yellow onions and the amount of time that this broth spent in contact with all of that chicken, all of the bones, the carcass, it's a beautiful thing. So 
I'm gonna fish around for the legs and just take a little piece and see if it shreds right off, which it does, which means it's tender and we're good to go. So let's come back over here for a moment. Okay, now I'm fishing out these legs. So there's two of them. I'm gonna let those cool for a minute and in the meantime, I'm gonna strain out the broth. All right, so now that all of the vegetables and the bones have given everything that they possibly can to this broth, we're gonna strain it all out and into a fresh pot. And we're gonna discard all of this now because it's really pretty lifeless at this point, but we used it for all that it's worth. Let's throw this back on the heat and we'll bring it up to a boil and we'll cook our giudellini in there. So now we shred the meat, the very, very tender leg meat, which comes off very easily with your hands, and shred that into the bowl with the chicken breast. So tender. Okay, so here's all of our meat that's gonna go back in. Wash my hands one more time. My basil say. I love you, Andy. It actually does smell exactly like basil. I don't know if you guys smelled it. it. Smells like summer. Okay, I'm chopping dill, which I'm gonna stir in a little bit later on. There's kind of a lot of dill in this soup, and that is because I love dill. Um, very simply, and I think that dill and chicken noodle soup is one of life's greatest pleasures. However, if you don't like dill, you don't need to put the dill in. You could either leave it out or you could use parsley instead, um, or chives, cilantro, I guess, if you want to go that way. It's not essential, but I think it's nice. Let's go drop in our didellini. The nice thing about didellini is that it cooks very quickly, and so you can actually just cook it right into the pot of broth, as opposed to adding it to a whole nother pot of boiling water. If you were to use a larger pasta, like an egg noodle, or a penne, or a fusilli, or something else, you would probably want to cook that separately, just because there'd be so much starch and it would take so long to cook that by the time it was cooked, your broth would be reduced and it would kind of throw the whole thing off. I engineered this recipe such that you don't have to do any of that as long as you use a small pasta. So use didellini, you could use orzo, you could use the ABC pasta, something small, macaroni would be fine. Um, the stock has just come to a boil, so I'm stirring in six ounces. It's not a full box, because um, this isn't the main event. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of body. We're gonna cook this halfway, so for about four minutes before stirring in all of the vegetables and the meat that we just put, picked. There's a little bit of foam here, so I'm gonna start skimming again. Always be skimming. What are the other small pastas of the world? <laughs> That's true. All right, here we go. Back in with all of the meat and then adding the fresh veggies. And then we'll just let this cook another three or four minutes until the didellini is cooked and the celery and carrots are tender. Let's taste one more. C'est fini. All right, that was easy. Let's go, back we go. Because we haven't really paid much attention to seasoning yet here, although we did pretty aggressively season the chicken but this is your moment to adjust the seasoning of the broth. Did you guys season the broth? Just for good measure. Not that it needs it. <laughs> and then I'm a big fan of lots of black pepper in my chicken noodle soup. And there goes all the dill. You want the dill to be nice and bright and fresh, so adding it sort of at the last minute. You could also just throw it out on the table and have people add it as they as they eat. Okay, let's dish it up. Making sure to get lots of all the goodness in every one. And some of my beautiful little celeries. My sweet, sweet celery. And then some pretty dill for garnish, some sprigs. And more black pep. That's all she wrote. I think what we've learned today and what makes this chicken soup better than all the other ones is that we spend a lot of time on the broth, so that's 
hugely important in the deliciousness factor of the soup. And we took a lot of care in being sure that the chicken breast didn't get overcooked, which is the bane of my existence, is overcooked chicken breast in chicken noodle soup. So now we have perfectly cooked chicken, very flavorful broth, tender chicken legs, just cooked through little slivers of carrot and celery, lots of dill, black pepper, and my cute little diddleens. I'm actually going home now. I'm going, I'm actually leaving now, so goodbye and good luck. I'm taking all this with me. I'm gonna go eat this in bed. But you can't come there. I'm gonna get rid of this now. Yeah, let's get rid of it. That was graceful.